Okay, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm just... I played these $10 9 Max games on PokerStars uh, about two days ago now, and I've just got round to... Uh, I think I played for about three hours, maybe four hours, something like that, three hours or so. And uh, I edited the video down. I've edited the video down and... Um, me a little bit of time to do been a bit busy so sorry about that this uh, sort of a little bit a day or two behind but um this is an interesting session i've decided to play some ten dollar games because i've not really had much time to play poker over the last two or three days i've had friends visiting me uh and uh i had to take care of them a little bit which has been great for some good times and so it just means i have had a little bit less time to to do this and but also i was looking at the uh, i'll do a, i will do a full bankroll update i mean i'm going to show the chart for this session at the end of the video um but i will do a full bankroll challenge update in the next day or two but I think we, you know, we were around about two hundred dollars or so in profit. So I thought, well, okay, we have about twenty buy-ins there, obviously for ten dollar games, and we've done fairly okay on them prior to that. I think. I think we 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 didn't lose anyway. And I thought, well, if we play some ten dollar games, um. We're going to probably earn more points towards the mon monthly poker challenge and more points towards the chess and more points in the leaderboards. So we get more bonuses anyway, so that should add up. So, you know, I don't know what that works out. Let, let, let's, let's say $400 a month, something like that, potentially, if you really play it full on. I, I'm not able to do that at the moment. So for you know, let's uh, imagine four hundred dollars, close to two hundred dollars. So that's potentially six hundred dollars we got to play with. Uh, four hundred that is like you know uh, potential, and two hundred of that is actual. So I thought, well, you know, let's play some ten dollar games and try and push it up a little bit. And if we go down a bit, we'll we'll drop down. But so we played this session. I'm not really talking about the hands yet. I just want to sort of talk about. But you know my idea where that's at. So, so so far so good. Um, I think we did this session. We were around plus thirty, thirty-five dollars, or plus three or four buy-in, or something like that. So, you know, so that's great. So anyway, let let's try and talk about some of the hands. I didn't get um, all of the hands. It was it was a bit bit of a crazy session actually. I think we had a lot of luck. It's one of those sessions where a lot of things look at this hand, so a lot of things seem to go our way. We had a little a lot of this kind of thing going on. <laughs> so I'm not complaining. It was just like, you know, and uh so that was great. And you know, we 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 we've had a lot of, we've had a few sessions where everything's gone against us, so it was nice to have one that kind of things went our way. The cards were falling for us, certainly. Um, but also, I was playing four tables, so you could only see one table at a time uh, here. And I don't really switch between them too much. You know what? I think what I was doing, one, I was forgetting I was recording sometimes. I think I played this really early in the morning, like about 4 a.m. Sometimes I get up really early and, um, you know, I'm alive and I'm ready to play. And it's kind of like okay. I can do three or four hours, and uh, but I was playing and I was kind of um sometimes I was just forgetting I was recording and I think I'm still getting used to that where it's like I got to click to that table I got to click to that table so sometimes I I was forgetting I was recording and I think I was just playing like I usually do just looking at the different tables and. 
So I missed some hands like that. I was like, oh no, I should have switched that table. I've missed that. But there's still, well, there's an hour worth of hands here. There's still like, plenty here. So, and, and then the next thing was, um, and sometimes there'll be three or four, you know, well, three or four, there'll be, well, yeah, three or four great hand. There was a big great hand on every table. I can only record one at a time. I could, I could zoom out and and show all four of them, but I probably didn't think of them about that quickly enough because um, each table <laughs> required quite a lot of attention. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, you know, I think looking at these, I think there's a lot of hands that I think are fairly straightforward. I think I've, I've played reasonably okay. And there's a few hands here where I was looking at this as I was editing it, and I was like, oh, what did I do there? Uh, no, nothing too major. I don't, I don't think I really made any big, big bloopers here. But, and, but, you know, still plenty of question marks in my games. There were still lots of spots for... I shouldn't have folded there, I should have called, or, you know, those, those sorts of things. There was, you know, marginal hands, I'm, and, in, and, and those kind of spots where I think they're going to make a big difference to your long-term profitability or not, I'm, you know, I, I do need to work on. So, um, let, let's try to focus a little bit on the hands now. I mean... Some some of the hands. I mean, I'm not a coach. I'm not a. Um, you know, I can't say oh, well, you should be doing this twenty percent of the time. You should be doing this, you know, because I'm still kind of learning a lot of that myself. I'm just saying, this is what I did. <laughs> um, this is my reason why I did it. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. This is a blog. It's not a coaching video or a training video. It's it's just me playing poker and. You know, sometimes I make a dog's dinner of it, and sometimes I get a bit of luck, and sometimes I do the right thing. So I'm still a work in progress. Like this one here, Ace Jack. It's just one of those. I find it's a really tough hand to play, a lot, especially in full ring. Do you know? Do you re-raise it, or um, what do you do with it? Do you know how 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 do you play? It? But we've got a guy here who's sixty three V pip, and you know. Uh, it's um you know some guys like that are, are never gonna fold you know so it's like you can go okay uh, let's bluff him and it's like you know it's, it's not gonna happen it's like yeah cool 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 i don't think they have a fold button you know so um but do i play you know, did I play that incorrectly or not? Probably not. I had a side, you know, so. There we go. We've hit top pair here. Again, so we've got you know, we're getting uh, a fair bit of luck here. So, fans were flops were falling, falling us, for, flops were falling for us a little bit. Um, we've had a lot of periods recently before this session where you know, just missing all the flops. I don't know what the statistics is. Is it? It's, it's something like you will miss a flop seventy percent of the time, something like that. I can't remember. But you know, and and, and sometimes that seventy percent of the time is like a hundred percent of two thousand hands <laughs> out of you know nine thousand hands, sort of thing. So um, that's how it goes. Okay. Overcard, good, good shot. Choose to continue here.
the thing what I like about pl uh, playing Nymax sometimes is it is a little bit slower. Um, don't get me wrong, I like playing six max. Uh, you know that I've got. You know, it's not like I don't like playing six max. I do like playing six max, and I do like playing four tables of six max. And I do like playing Zoom as well. But sometimes I just want to sit back and and uh, slow right down a bit. And I think nine max is is good for that. Obviously, it's slower and. You get that a little bit more time to think. And I was actually thinking, actually, whilst I was making this video, I think my next few videos are going to be $10 nine max. So this, this, this session went well. I'm not saying the next session, the next two or three sessions might be disastrous, but um, I kind of liked um, the pace of it. And I thought, well, okay, well, if we can get two or three good sessions in, at nine max and it's a, a steady pace um do what works you know i think um the six max has been well the zoom has been disastrous recently and we did i think i did a video recently where you know just done a little bit of work on our zoom game and i've done a lot of off work off table work not the last day or two could have had friends here but before that i was watching a lot of videos and uh, studying uh, a lot of stuff off table. And I know that was, that was beneficial. Try to plug my leaks a little bit. And um, I think I did a video a week or so ago, just, you know, let's, let's you know, play a, a couple of hours of Zoom or something like that, one table, just to try to you know, straighten out my graph a little bit. I think that was okay. I don't think we've made too much progress, but we didn't go down. I haven't done anything on Zoom since then. Um, but, you know, so the, my relationship with Zoom at the moment is going to be you know, trying to fix it. So it's going to be like, you know, uh, it's in it's in the it's in ICU sort of thing. You know, it's it's very sick. Uh, and it needs a lot of care and attention. And so I'm being careful with it. I'm trying to save it and then hopefully nurture it and grow and develop it sort of thing. That, but here with the Nymax, it's a different, it's a different animal. It's going okay. So in terms of the bankroll challenge, you know, it's going to have to do a bit of both. It's like, okay, we'll play some nine max at the moment over the next sort of week or two, maybe, and try to, to build up the bankroll, obviously, because that's the ultimate aim. And then maybe just do a little bit on, on the Zoom to, to, uh, to fix that, like we said. Tournaments? I don't know. I mean, I, I just... I haven't got time at the moment, which is it's probably not such a bad thing because um you know, we you know we, we haven't done so well in them we haven't done too bad in them, but we you know we're not you know we're not making any profit in them really, but we're not really losing that much money in them either I don't think it's it, it's from a variance perspective, it's okay, you know. But you know, I do want to play them. That's to 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 try and get some of the big wins. But it's time, I think. Well, uh, I don't know. I'll try and get some time tomorrow. We'll see uh, what uh, I I can do. I mean, I'm I'm recording this audio now, and it's on a Saturday, so. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, obviously. So, uh, you know, if I see what tomorrow looks like in terms of my time, if I might play a tournament or two then, along with some cash games. Sorry I'm not talking about any of the hands. If you do have any questions or queries about any of them, I will talk about the hands. Um, 
put them in the comments. I haven't really been watching it, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of, I've just been looking generally. But, you know, you can what you can see there is fairly obvious. I don't think there's really that much I can add to it. Let's have a look at some look a bit closer at it. Sometimes I like to open a hand like Queen 9 from under the gun. It's a bit loose. You know, it's uh, not the greatest hand, is it? It's suited. It's relatively connected. <laughs> not that closely connected, but it's uh, suited gapper. To, uh, you know, um, two gapper. Um, but the things I like about these is... Um, you know, if you get one flat like this, you get a bit of a pop there, and you get a nice flop. You know, you can um, you get a bit of a um, a bit of a bonus. Whereas sometimes, you know, you play a ace, ace, and you're gonna have one thing. So you've got a ace, ace and. Yeah, they all fold. I probably could have continued there. I think that was... Sometimes I think... I fold a bit prematurely. Um, I mean, it would have been a bit loose to continue there. We didn't really have anything, did we? I mean... But... Yeah. You know. We got the tens here. I flat this one, I think. Yeah, I don't think uh, multi-way tens has got any uh, reason to continue here now. Some of the hands you'll see there, they're not, you know, I've just kind of flipped to the table. Of, you know, I was probably finishing a hand on one table and thinking, oh, I need to, it'd be good to show that, and I didn't really get there at the start, and you probably, you know, you get the idea, you probably um, um, don't see 100% of the hand, you see from the flop onwards sort of thing, which you know, hopefully that has some value. You see my cursor zoo zipping all over the table there, but um, I think that is because I'm playing four tables and probably 
going across the table to another table. Um, there may be a better way that I can do that without it showing. I, I have no idea. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I don't think we can continue with the nines here. Three, three, he goes queen. I think he gets an ace, actually. I think. If I remember rightly. Yeah. So, we would have been ahead pre flop. Uh, so it was a lucky fall for us. Seven eight. I probably should have saved, saved that. I don't know why I folded that. You know, it, it's interesting for me when I go back over these videos. Um. Yeah, I, I even though the nine match is slower, you know, and I think certainly I think that's the other thing. There's fewer errors for me in nine match. You know, I think we need six match, particularly with Zoom, or multi table in Zoom. It's like click, 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 and I'm like, oh, I should have played that, or I've I've misclicked. I've, I've, there's more misclicks for me with Zoom, certainly. Um, you know, and that that happens, and the the, the slower six max. Regular tables, sometimes I think I'm, you know, clicking and before I'm thinking sort of thing, and and nine max less so, but still you can see here, I think there's a two or three times where I'm, I'm even now you know I'm looking at the video and I'm thinking, why didn't I play that hand? Why didn't I re-raise? Why didn't I call? You know, why did I fold? So, you know, it's still. Probably where I've got two or three hands on other tables, and I've, you know, I've, I haven't got no more space left in my brain to, to make the correct decision, you know. A uh, bit of an awkward one on that board to uh, go for it with the six eight you here. There's middle, scrimp, plus draws are. What they are, middle strength, weak draws. I don't really hammer into them. King King always comes with an ace, doesn't it? There you go. And his first card is an ace. Against a high V pit player, so I'm going to call. And, uh, yeah. I was watching a video yesterday, I think, about um, you know, a really tough um, river decision call and the, the, the outcome of the video was a bit like, you know, do you call or do you fold sort of thing in this particular situation. And what I understood from it was that, one, it's really player dependent so you know um a really tight player player who you don't think is ever bluffing you know um in some situations you're going to be folding let's say top pair king with ace king sort of thing when there's a straight or a flush on the board or something like that because not that the other players never bluff him but you know um the probability is, you know, we know with some players that's quite low. So that was that. But um, but then the other side of the coin was the guy who made the fold with the ace king. Actually, he said what he does, he just uses a random number generator, and you know. I think it's about 70, 30. He says he does 50, 50, I think, call, you know, call fold in those situations. But I think um, it should be 30% call, 70% fold, something I can't remember. But my point is, is um, 
I don't use random number generator, so I might have a look into it because I think it takes a decision away a little bit, doesn't it? It's like kind of, you know, you do get those situations on the river, facing a riverbed, where it's, should I call, should I fold? And I, what I liked about what I heard on the video was, you know, have your, you know, you've got those two elements, so it depends on the player. If, if it's this type of player, you do this. If it's not this type of player, do this. And and then, you, you know, you, you roll the dice sort of thing. And uh, I like that idea because, I mean, there's lots of times where I'm just like, I mean, at the moment, I don't know a lot of these players. So, I mean, I've got the, you can see the BPIP numbers I've got there, you know, that gives me, that's all the information I really have. I mean, I do use a HUD. A lot of times I'm not using it in-game. Um, I just like to see what's there. Um, I, so, I, th I think I've already said, I mean, I know some people are going to say, oh, you lose value from not playing with a HUD and you're a fish if you don't play with a HUD. And, you know, people like Charlie Carroll don't play with a HUD. Ginge Poker, um, Richard Shields, is it? doesn't play with a herd Daniel Negrano doesn't play with a herd I don't think you know so these are certainly not fish are they you know best players in the world some of these so you know and I think I think I've made more mistakes with the herd than you know certainly I've I think I've made calls when I should have folded based on the the information I'm getting from the herd and I've over relied too much on the herd in the past. I'm becoming a lot less reliant on it. I'm more um I mean, you know, I've got the V pips around um, you know, you can see that you know the numbers next to the players are the V pip numbers voluntary put into pot. But in game I'm rarely looking at this. I, I've got I label I've got the colour codes for each player, red, green Yellow, and that's roughly based on the VPIP. You can see, like, the red players are generally a higher VPIP. The green players are sort of normalish range, and the yellow players are tight, you know. You know, so, for example, if, if someone opens under the gun, and they're a yellow player, um... You know, and then they've got a VPIP of nine, but you know, very often I'm not looking at the VPIP. I'm kind of like I'm folding ace queen sort of off because you know, generally these players are playing ace king, a king king, ace ace, queen queen under the gun, you know, because well, I probably wouldn't fold ace queen, but you know, I'm, I'm not taking ace queen off too seriously. I'm like. Yeah, I'll probably call and see what happens. If I get two queens, I might go for it, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But if it's a red player, uh, opening under the gun, 45% VPIP, yeah, I'm very happy with my ace queen. You know, quite likely I'm ahead. I'm looking forward to seeing the flop. I'm looking forward to seeing some action. So. So that's what something I was thinking about doing is starting to use a random number generator. But you know, this, I've got so many buttons to click at the moment. With the um, you know, let's say I'm playing for tables. Look at that. How often do I? I've seen this a bit recently, but there, -da! that was great. Very lucky for us. Um, I've had that a few times recently where I've had. Decent flush, and we've been out flushed most of the time to our detriment, especially in tournaments. We've been out the tournament. Anyway, so yeah, I'm thinking about picking a random number, you know, setting up a random number generator to click on and 
given me my decision to call a fold on those situations I was just talking about. But it's another button to click, isn't it? You know? Four tables to play. I've got the uh I'm trying to manage my stream labs to uh, click onto this table, click onto that table, and I'm forgetting that half the time. And now I've got to click a number <laughs> to decide what to do with the cards. Um you know, it's a bit challenging. The other thing I was thinking of doing is just playing one table of one or two tables. I mean, this is four tables of ten dollar. Um, this is good, good flop for us. On top with the uh, that ten. Let's see what I can't remember what happens here. I think it works out well for us, but good so far. We've got action. Uh, I'll re raise it. I'll re raise it just to protect against the draws a little bit. It's a bit of a high re raise. I think um, that's a mistake. But we get a call and wow, um, and uh, <laughs> amazing. You know, I think that's an example where. I mean, that hand worked out well for us, obviously. Uh, but I think when the guy called the big bet, he's probably on something like, you know, um, probably had an open ending straight draw or something like that. Or it could have even had ace ace, for example. But I, I didn't play that hand correctly. I mean, that I, I don't know why I put such a big bet. I mean, obviously, I was probably worried about the, the draw. Someone got king queen, maybe. So really want to make them pay for the ace or the uh the nine for the straight. Um you know, so I think my bet sizing was wrong now, but you know, it worked out for us. I'm not I'm not complaining too much. But again, even with the hands there that we, you know, we run money on, I think there's still, looking at it, there's still ways I could have played that better. But sometimes, again, I think, so sometimes this comes from multi-tabling, where I kind of like, okay, let's raise by 70% or whatever, and I think, you know, maybe it could have been a multi, um, multi-way pot and uh, you know it's kind of i end up really not spending enough time organizing the the correct bet size i'm not saying the bet size was wrong but i just think it probably was a better one that uh jack 10 hand I mean, I do like to talk generally during my videos because I, I think there are plenty of poker channels out there that, you know, do talk about. You know, how, I, I will do some videos. What I've been, I did, what I've been thinking about more than anything at the moment is how to do a hand, an individual hand analysis video that is meaningful to me, first of all, so that I understand it and may be helpful to others. And I, I'm kind of like, at the moment, I think I would do a hand and go, I did this and then I did that. I could do this. I could do that. Um, and it's all this kind of modal verb speculation. And something i've been thinking about i've been thinking about yes i would like to do some individual hand analysis videos and learn how to analyze individual hands a little bit better myself and to present those two but i think i just need to come up with a 
sort of format and a structure to do that. So like, you know, what am I doing here? Um, and what am I going to learn? You know, by doing this, what am I going to learn? It's not just about, oh, let's put the video up. Because if I do individual hand analysis videos, I want to, um, and I think th this is the good thing about me doing videos is before when I go through my hands, I go, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I should do that. Let's just make a note. Um, let, let, let's try to work on that a bit. Let's do that better in the future. You know, that's kind of my process. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I think by doing these videos, I'm thinking, okay, I want to do an individual hand analysis video. Um, but that means I'm going to have to sort of rethink how I analyze my hands because it's going to have to be a little bit more, it's going to have to be a bit more quality there than what I usually do. Um, so... Re-raise here with the queen queens, and we get the uh, shove there. The guy on our left, nice bit of money in the pot. We'll go for that. We're ahead. Let's hopefully we stay ahead, and we do. See, um, I think this is the second. I mean, <laughs> this is the second hand in this video where we've 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 had that ten, and I mean, look at that run out there. We've had that two or three times in this session. We had that ten a, a couple of seconds ago. Well, in this video, and you know, we had a run out with a jet ten. We got a boat anyway. I can't remember exactly how it was. You know, we had uh, we had that plus hand where we were. I think we had queen ten or something. Was it queen nine, something like that, against ace two? So we were behind, and then we got you know runner runner. Uh, so you know, like I said at the start of the video, we had a lot of luck in this session. To be honest with you. It was like, wow, yeah, that's great, that's great. We were just, you know, the cards were falling for us, you know, uh, all the time. So, not all the time, but it was, it was, it was good. So, I don't know, take that. And in the next session, will probably be a disaster. You know, had a lot of, you know, yeah, you know, gain, up to, oh. Difficult to get value, isn't it, when you've kind of flopped the nuts because no one wants to play with, uh, you know, with this kind of bird because there's, if you've got nothing, then what's the incentive to continue, you know? But people do continue with silly cards sometimes, even on a bird like this, so... We have a little bit of extra money here. I ch checked here. I think. I think this is the other thing. I've, I've I've started doing this again a little bit. I think I made a decision a couple of weeks ago. I sort of not to check the river so much, and to do something different. And I think in this session, I think I was checked the river a few times, and I should have. That was. Uh, I think with the flush coming in there. 
Um, there was lots of other possibilities where a a villain would have bet or called a called a bet. So checking was a mistake. Um, so again, this is something we've got to work on. It's just betting. My bet sizes and bet frequencies are a bit of a mess. You know, they are not the most profitable way to play. I mean, it's a profitable session, three or four buy-ins, you know, but my feeling is I could probably have done even better if I'd played better. So even with the hands that, you know, I've done well or I've won money on, I think it's not just about looking at the hands that you lose, is it? Oh, I lost that part. I've lost the stack. It's those little bits where you think, okay, I could have... Uh, I could have got another five big blinds here, you know. I, I would have called that and um, do that two or three times, then, you know, over a long period of time, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Got a good shot at the bottom in there, uh, back draw, plus draw. Continue. It's straight. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, may not have the best sound here. Uh huh. One of those ones and the flushes there, better straights there. But We've got to continue, I think. Uh, look at that. Yeah, well. We're going to hide into nothing there. It's one of those ones, wasn't it? You could have had Ace Ace, you know. But, uh. Never open Ender. I should call this hot. Annoying one. Let me get the straight. Yeah, I mean... What a beat. You know, and I made that bet at the end there. You know, going back to the queen-queen hand where I didn't bet on the flop, and I get that hand where it's like a complete mess, and I bet half pot. Uh, you know, so that's just two blunders. Two blunders there. I'm like, I think, like, a bit of an excuse, it could possibly be where I'm just started start to get a bit tired at sort of, Halfway through the session, and I'm, 
you know, I'm not playing my best. But, you know, looking at this now, you know, it's great for me because I think, you know, these are, these are things I need to work on. Again, look, it's an amazing flop for us. Very often, recently, in a situation like this, I think, yes, you know, I've got tips. And, um, you know, the guys had King King. You know, that's, that's, been, that's how it's been for me recently. But I don't know how. I think, I think this turns out good for us. The guy uh, and the guy, the villain here, I think I remember, I don't really know him that well, I think he was quite an aggressive player. Whenever he played a hand, whenever I played a hand against him or even he, he played against anyone, he was like, you know, bet, 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 bet. But I'm lucky for him there, he had the 4-2, so it's, uh, but, you know. Um, he was obviously continuing with something, wasn't he? I mean, with uh, the trips there. I, I, I was worried about King King, but I think that would have been, may have played that a bit differently. I thought it was maybe something like, you know, uh, King Jack or something like that. King something. Let me re raise the uh, Queen 10 suited there. Don't get any action. Punish the limp a little bit. It's nice, I think, with the nine max as well, when um, you do get a, you know, deep stacked. And you know, here we've got, you know, we've gone from 100 to 260, 270 big blinds. It's nice when you get deeper stacked than that as well. I think it's great, you know, when you've got those three extra players, um, you know, and you get a situation where two or three players limp or two or three players call, and you can, you know, you're in a position where you can re raise those. You know, compared to a six max, you often can get, I find you often get a situation where you're, you're playing for bigger pots because of that. I mean, it's really good, I think, for things like I feel just a feeling, it's not, not, uh, not any kind of particular, uh, scientific analysis on this suited connectors i think i feel a li little bit more confident about playing those but i'm also playing those correctly in nine mats well a bit more correctly in nine mats games because you know there's more mo there's more money to aim for you know you got two or three people so someone's open raise two callers you know, there's a total of 500 chips there. You've got eight, seven suited on the button or something like that. Oh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's nice. In a six match game, you know, sometimes it's difficult to get eight, seven suited on the button to sort of, to make it really playable in comparison. So I think, personally, I think, I think suited connectors work better for me in, um, nine mats games i'm not saying i win more on i'll have to have a look at it maybe but i like them Yeah, one or two hands. I mean, that last time with the, the Jack top pair, played that a bit aggressively. Um, I think uh, that player, um, you know, he's, he's a top player. I think uh, he was uh, he's one of those players again, whenever we were in a hand against him or her, was, uh, you know, battling. Battling to make your fault, you know? And uh, I thought, well, okay. You've either got it or you haven't there, and uh, let's see what happens. Top pair here. This is one of the. It's really, it's really, really tricky spots, aren't they? You know, the jack comes in, in a nice hand, and it's taking a lot of the value away from our hand. Yeah. 
have to continue and game bet here, but gonna bet half pot and I think this is a mistake. I obviously got the jack nine there. You know those those river bets I need to work on. Yeah, I'm certainly checking when I should be betting. Um, when I'm betting, my size is not correct. I don't think it should be smaller or it should be bigger. It's just, I'm guessing, I think sometimes too much. And I need to, need to do some work on it. Check here with the Jack Jack on the on the on the river. I don't know why I'm doing that. I think I'm okay to bet. I just uh, a bit of a strange one. I'm not likely to have fives, tens. Um, maybe I was. Plain fancy there, maybe. Can't remember in game. You know, I'm I'm kind of it's a, to, to, uh, my thought processes in game are probably they have probably have a very good reason why I do some things that I, I, I can't remember now, and um, I maybe you know looking back at the video, um, looking back at the game, um. My thought process is different. This is good for me. I mean, I think certainly over the last month or two, whilst doing this channel, I've looked at more of my, you know, more of my hands than I probably ever looked at because of doing the doing this channel, and I think that's good for my poker. You know, so thank you for <laughs> helping me. But um, you know, otherwise, I think I would have. There would have been periods of times where I just play for a week or two, and I'm, you know, a bit lazy with the study or something like that. But this kind of forces me to, um, oh, sorry about that. That happened with there with the uh, edited that out. Um, but it forces me to sort of think a bit more, try to think a bit more carefully whilst I'm playing, and I get to look back over my hands a lot more now and I think that that, that process is really helpful for me but, um, I think sometimes when you're just playing oh, I made a mistake here oh, that wasn't great oh. and uh, then finish the game and then you know you don't really um, do anything about it So I think this is really beneficial for me. I certainly would encourage you to, you know, to... I think that's the thing, isn't it? I think... I, I like playing poker. It's like kind of... Yeah, it's a nice hobby sort of thing. 
and I want to get better at poker and I want to do really well at poker. But you do have to be, I think, you know, you do have to be disciplined about studying poker. If you do want to do all that and you really do want to develop your game, it requires study. Then there's no other, you know, it's not good. Yeah, I think sometimes you hear some of the top pros say, oh, you know, I just played, I just, I played thousands of hands. Yeah, I mean that, that that that's part of the story, you know. Um, sure, Tom Dwan got great by playing thousands of hands, but I'm sure he's also spent thousands of hours analyzing a lot of those hands too, you know. So, um, I think I I've probably not spent as much time as I should have done at some points studying my hands because like i say it's not just about the hands that you do well on you know and on the win money it, uh, or the hands that you lose it's those kind of marginal spots where you could have made a few more big blinds in you could have you know done something slightly different I mean, not necessarily the outcome would have been different massively but, you know, over a long period of time, um, it would have added up. I think we're nearly at the end of the video now, I think. I think it was about, uh, we've got about an hour or so. Yeah, three or four minutes left. And then I think I've got the, uh, I think I've, I've learned how to, I'm still learning how to do videos. So these, these videos are still not great, in my opinion. Still a bit rough. Um, but one thing I did learn to do is to um, copy a chart in at the end here. To make that, uh, hopefully that is, uh, looks okay. I don't know until we get there. Which we're nearly there now, I think. Well, we can see how we did. Like I can say this was two days ago. I, don't, I didn't play yesterday, I don't think. I haven't really played much since this session. Mm, hundred hands or so been busy the last couple of days, which is, I've got about monthly poker challenge, 750 points to get the monthly poker challenge. I think I'm around about, um, nearly about 300 points, I think now, and I've got about 14 days to go. So I think that's, you know, we've got about 400 points to get in 14 days or so. So I think, you know, over the next, if I play tomorrow, uh, I'm, uh, if I play some tournaments and maybe some ten dollar or ten dollar tables on a tournament or two, um, and, and then next by the end of next week, I think I'm certainly going to get that sixty dollars. I don't think we'll get two this month, but next month I'm going to be. Maybe aim to get two because we probably could go up to a twenty-five dollar level by max. Maybe want to get to around about five hundred dollars before we probably attempt that. Um, but we've got you know probably about two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars more profit to make. Um. I really need two or three days just to sit and play. I don't think throughout the whole bankroll challenge I've had three days of being able to play 10 hours. I just, uh, just been one of those times where, um, 
I haven't had as much time as I would have wanted to do it. <laughs> Typical. Oh, let's do this. And, uh... But, 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 you know, we'll get there. I'm not, like, I, it's not a race for me to, to get a million dollars. Be nice to have it tomorrow. But, you know, I'm, you know, I'm kind of... The bankroll challenge is not like, let's make a million dollars in one year. It's, uh, let's make, you know, as much money as we can over X period of time, you know. I think, hopefully, by seeing the videos, if I do do well, you know, you could probably do it a lot quicker than I do it. You, you have more time than me to do it, then great. I mean, you can condense what I do into, I don't know, I think... I, in two months, in over two months, I think I've, I must have played about 120,000 hands. Well, you know, some people do that in 10 days <laughs> or less. So you get the idea. Um, there's certainly different approach approaches time-wise that you can make, you can do compared to what I, um, I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it slow and easy overall. Excuse me. Okay, so let's pause it there. So this is just the, um, oops. Um, well, that was just to probably go back a little bit there.